Do you want to learn how to run a Cisco Nexus 9000 switch on Mac OS? Hi, I'm Ronnie Wong, Edge Tanner here at IT Pro TV, and I'm going to show you what the pros know. All right, so you're in networking, and you're also learning a little bit about development. Well, one of the requirements that you might actually find out is that you need to be able to run something like your Ansible playbook or the idea of, of course, Python scripts against a Cisco device. One of the easiest ones to choose, of course, is the Nexus 9000 switch. Now you might have to say, hey, do I have to go out and buy a switch? Not necessarily. They do have the Nexus 9000V that you can go and download directly from Cisco, and it is a free option. It's a platform that you can test against, and this is something that you can actually get running on your Mac OS machine. So let's show you how to actually go ahead and do that. Now, there's a couple of uh, prerequisites as we do so. So you need to have a machine that has at least eight gigs of RAM running. That's pretty much it. But the easy part is essentially the downloads. So what you want to do is we're actually gonna be using Vagrant to help us to get this running. So we wanna to go to, of course, to the Cisco website. And on Cisco website, you can then select underneath the software download once you do so, under the Nexus 9000 V switch, what we're looking for is the first listing here that says Nexus 9000 virtual switch for Vagrant. Now, when you go ahead and click on this in the download link, it's gonna ask you for your Cisco ID. You'll provide that, you can register for that at Cisco, and then you can begin the download for that. Now, there are other options that are available, but for us, we're just gonna be using the Vagrant option at this particular point. So we'll actually make sure that we get that downloaded. Now, we'll be moving that file to another location once we download it, but we'll go ahead and download that as well. Now, since we're gonna be using Vagrant, you also want to go to, well, vagrantup.com. Okay, once you select vagrantup.com, you're gonna see right in the middle of the screen towards the bottom edge here is gonna be a download button for download 2.2.7. Now I have an earlier edition of this that I've previously downloaded, but if you select the download screen, since you're running on Mac OS, you're going to look for the link for Mac OS 64-bit, select that one, and that will also start your process of downloading as well. So you wanna make sure that you get that downloaded too. Now, the other one, of course, is gonna be VirtualBox. VirtualBox is probably the easiest way to do this since we already have an image. Uh, the Nexus 9000 image is designed for VirtualBox to run. Well, you're gonna to go to virtualbox.org this time, not .com, but .org, and the neat thing is they have a nice big blue button. Now, this is where you have to slow down a little bit. The reason why is it will not run, at least the Vagrant uh, that we're actually doing, it will not run on VirtualBox 6.1, but if I go ahead and select that button right here, that should take me to the download page. What I'm gonna look for is if I scroll down is where it says VirtualBox Older Builds, select the link right here that says Older Builds. And then I can choose, and the latest one that I can actually choose is gonna be VirtualBox 6.0. So of course you want to download that. And once you download all of those into your downloads folder, well then, you of course can actually run them and go ahead and, down and uh, install them as well. Now I've previously done this, so I've already removed those downloads, but that's all you have to do. So that's kind of the easy part of what we're actually doing at this point. So just go and download them, install them in the way that they're actually gonna require you to. You may have to provide permissions, but that will get you ahead of the game. And once you actually have that up and you know uh, going and everything's actually installed, we're actually kind of already halfway there. Now we want to essentially create the folder that we're gonna be running Vagrant in. So I'm gonna to go to my documents folder here. I'm gonna right click and create a new folder and I'll just call this one virtual machines for right now. Then I'm gonna create a subfolder for Vagrant. So this is gonna be my new Vagrant, Vagrant folder. And this is where I want to move that particular Nexus 9000 image to. So if I go back to downloads, I can actually select this here and I can, uh, let's see what I can actually do. Let me actually do it a different way here. I'm gonna right click and open a new tab. And on this new tab, let's see, did I select the right one? Oh, that'll get me there anyways. So documents and then Vagrant. And inside of this, I'm just going to select that file and move it right in there. So I'll be navigating that file in uh, that folder in the terminal to help us to begin uh, sort of the next process here. 
So that's kind of the easiest steps that we have when we begin to actually say, hey, we're about to get this up and going. Now, as we start this process, we want to go ahead and run VirtualBox in the background. So I'm just gonna type in VirtualBox and get that up and running. I'm gonna verify that it actually is going to be running here in just a moment. It looks like it's hopping around and that's all I need to do. I just need to have it up and running in the background. Once I do that, I need to run my terminal. I'm gonna bring up my terminal. I went ahead and enlarged the font size so that we could actually see it a little bit easier. Now, once we get to this point, I need to navigate to that particular folder. So if I select documents and then virtual machines and vagrant, if I do an LS, you can see that there's the file that I actually downloaded and everything's actually in there for what we want. Now, we need to add this particular image so that Vagrant can find it as well, okay? So what I do is I type in Vagrant box add dash dash. We need to provide it a name. I'm just gonna do an N9000V like this. And then I need the name of that file, which is gonna be NXOSV dot 9.3.2 dot box. In the moment here, we'll actually see the process begin. We're actually seeing Vagrant essentially find that file and add it in. So it actually does take a little bit of time as it's actually doing this. If everything is actually up and running, it should actually be happening uh, fairly soon. And there it goes. Notice it actually is telling us what's happening is about 10, 12, maybe 20 seconds away as it's doing it. Now, this is actually an important process. If we skip this step, it means Vagrant doesn't know where to find this particular file. So we're about halfway there. Now, the other thing once we actually get that in there, okay, is we wanna verify that it's actually been done completely once it's there. And we'll actually use the uh, commands here, vagrant box list is what we'll actually use once everything is actually done. All right, so it actually says that I've already uh, added it, which is perfectly fine. So you actually do see that's there. So I'll actually do vagrant box list. And in the moment we actually see that's what we're looking for right here is where we actually see it says this is a virtual box image it is actually there and we see that zero as an index number for us so we are perfectly fine with that now with virtual box running in the background we're not completely done with the command line yet and we're actually going to be working from the command line at this particular point on so if everything is actually up and running in the background we already saw that virtual box is running we have vagrant now actually saying hey the image is ready there which is perfectly fine for us we now want to do vagrant init and then 9000 V is what we're doing here. So we're actually using the name that's actually calling out. We're actually initializing it for what we actually want it to do. Now in a moment here, it's going to go through that same process and it actually has done exactly what we need to do, which was to create that vagrant file. Now I want to verify that by just doing a list here and now notice two files exist. One is the Vagrant file, which essentially is kind of the definition of the virtual file that we're actually be using, and of course the image that we're using as well, okay? Now that that's done, a couple of things are gonna happen here that may seem a little bit more counterintuitive. We want to go ahead and see, can this actually run? So the easiest way to do that, let me move up our terminal at this point, is Vagrant up. So that will go ahead and get this running. Now, before I press this, I do want you to know, it takes a bit of time before it actually, uh, oh, I misspelled it. I was gonna say before, <laughs> vagrant up, before it actually can do everything that it needs to. Now, the hard part is fairly this. It's not that it can actually take just a little bit of time. It can take anywhere between, let's say 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes before everything's actually working. But I wanted to show, show you at least the process here of what is happening as well, okay? So now you're actually seeing where it's clearing everything, it's actually beginning to build stuff, and this is part of that process as it's going through. Now, how do I know that the actual virtual machine is actually running, or the Nexus 9000 is running? If I go to VirtualBox, I can see that it's actually running right here, okay? Now, one of the ways that we can speed up this process in just a little bit is by simply right-clicking and then let's go ahead and power this thing off. So I actually tell it we're powering it off here for a moment. We're stopping it. I don't want to close out of it completely. 
Let me zoom back out. And it's gonna give me an error saying, hey, are you sure you wanted this? Sure thing. And we are gonna launch it again. Now, when it launches again, we should see some of the same things that we're actually seeing here. We're just actually doing everything, and notice how fast it is where it got to that point before where we had to build up everything. Now, at this point, it's gonna take a bit of time. So we're gonna actually just pause, and when you next see us, we'll actually be ready to run the actual uh, file that actually allow, or to actually be able to SSH directly into this machine, and that will allow us to be able to interact with the Nexus 9000V. So we're actually ready to do that, so in just a moment, you'll actually see that. All right, so it's just been a few minutes right here in the studio. Yours may have actually just been, well, no time at all, but everything is actually running. Now, it did time out, and once it actually finished timing out, I can now go ahead and implement, well, Vagrant SSH. Now, we already told that we could do this through the local host, uh, uh, the 127.0.0.1, uh, but with Vagrant, we don't have to do that. We simply type in uh, Vagrant SSH, and once we do so, if everything is actually connecting and working correctly, we should end up seeing that the next prompt that we're at is gonna be inside of that Nexus 9000V. Now, to verify that this is actually doing what we need to, I can do a show version, and that actually does show me that this is a demo version of the Nexus operating system, and this is perfect for you to be able to actually create small Ansible playbooks that you can run against this next Nexus 9000V or the idea, of course, of even Python scripts is actually another way that you can do this, but all on your particular Mac OS machine. Now, there's only one other thing that we need to do, which is, well, once we're actually done, what do we actually do here? So I simply type in exit, but we're not completely done yet, okay? So if I want to make sure that everything is actually off and over, there's a couple of easy ways. We might think that we should gracefully shut down this machine, but the way that Nexus 9000 works it doesn't really like that. So in the end, what is actually recommended is that you go back to VirtualBox, and with VirtualBox, you just want to right click, and then you want to power off the machine here. So once that's done, you simply select Power Off, and now it's actually powered off, and then there's one other command here, depending on what you need to do. Now it doesn't mean that it's actually completely done, but if you're done completely with this image, you can actually do a Vagrant, destroy, and that will go ahead and get rid of the actual default virtual machine if you want to, but it's not completely removed yet. So notice it's actually destroying it, but if I want to remove it, it's vagrant remove, and that will now get rid of the actual files that we have. So uh, actually, I would actually need to know the name of it as well. But that's the idea, is that you would use that vagrant remove command and, of course, the name of the file that you're actually working with. So those are actually the commands that we have. Now, if you want to learn about this and, of course, more skills, you want to visit itpro.tv. I'm Ronnie Wong, and now you know what the pros know.